I wish we could take the resilience, the courage, the fortitude of young men, 16 and 17, who lied about their ages 80 years ago to fight for this country, to give this younger generation the liberty and the freedoms that they have. I wish I could ingrain that in Gen Z sometimes and make them understand that, yes, it is a hard time. Yes, there was a pandemic and yes, all of those things. But actually, we can learn from the past. What are your thoughts uh, at this time about something that was so so relevant to this country, the Normandy uh, landings and how much they gave for this generation? Yeah, I mean, it's a, that, it's a fascinating question. I mean, as a former military guy, I do quite a lot of work with the veteran community, uh, interviewed a guy uh, called Colin Bell, Flight Lieutenant Colin Bell, DFC, only two weeks ago. He's 103 years old and uh, still sharp as a button. He doesn't think of himself as a hero. You know, a lot of that generation... They, when you start talking about their wartime experiences within a minute, they are in tears. Mm. They're in tears because they remember their colleagues. They feel they betrayed them in some way because they survived. And they don't like talking about it because they witnessed the horrors of war. They had to do some dreadful deeds in order to prevail. And they compartmentalize it all. And yet, if it were not for their sacrifice, for doing amazing deeds, then we would not be enjoying um, the lifestyle we have uh, today. And I think you're showing pictures at the moment. I think there's a couple of things I take the poignancy. First of all, the immense sacrifice. Mm. Over 70 million people lost their lives in World War II. And although we now know that D-Day was successful, at the time, General Eisenhower, who was running the forces, wrote a letter of resignation because he wasn't sure it was going to work. The original plan had been to go in a year earlier, but the military chief said, we're just not ready. And even on the eve of it, Churchill had grave reservations. But on that Operation Overlord, the first day of liberating Europe, 156,000 people made it across to France, 7,000 ships, 4,500 people had died by the end of that one day. And that sacrifice started a chain of events that 11 months later finished the war. And I think for me, for many of those veterans, this is the last opportunity we're going to see many of those. Most of them, even the youngest, are well into their 90s now. They're all humble. They remember their fallen comrades, and it's important they have the chance um, to remember. But I think they're all absolute heroes, and it's a poignant reminder of the tragic loss of life. And I think the final point on that is I think the king looked genuinely moved, and I think he's been reminded this year with his cancer treatment of his own mortality. His mother um, had served in the military in the Second World War, and I think he was very keen to pay his personal respects. And I think it wasn't just an act of that he had to as the monarchy. I think for him, it was very poignant. And I think that reflects across the whole nation. It was so well said, Sean. And, and I thought today about my mother was in the Second World War and uh, the Women's Royal Air Force, and you think about you know, I know the world has changed, right? And I know that, uh, you know, my kids will say, oh, you're so old and fuddy-duddy and whatever. But I just think that some of those values, some of those, uh, just the way, you t you, words you used, humble. Nowadays, if you, I don't know, if you cut your toenails, you expect to get, you know, complimented. These people gave so much. Do you think, here's a wider question for you before I ask you about the other story in the news about troops today. I think we do enough for our veterans, Sean, because I don't. That's a that's a great question. I, I think um, I say I do a lot of work. I'm, I'm an ambassador for Royal Air Force Association. Uh, I, it's privileged to meet some of these old boys. And and to be honest, I, I, for me, the most moving moments I had was when we opened the Bomber Command Memorial, and the the veterans turned up on that day looking old and haggard in their wizened old military uniform. I was in my about the last days in the military, and I was going around. It's a really hot day, giving out water, and these old boys would jump to their feet. Uh, as you pass, because you're a senior officer, um, they would start talking about their experiences because they saw your wings on your chest, a fellow a fellow airman. And again, they were in tears. And after about five minutes, you, 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 you know, made your apologies to move away. And their family would jump up afterwards and say, do you know, we've known him for his whole life or most of his life, but we've never heard that story before. And I don't, and it's only because as a fellow military guy, you can start to engage in conversations. And I think the general public would always have a difficulty with resonating. The danger we just see old blokes, and actually they've lived a life 
And they have made some sacrifices that, you know, bluntly, I wonder if I could have ever stepped up to do some of the things that they could do. And I think the tragedy of getting old is we do just see them as bed blockers, whereas the harsh reality is there's a last generation of heroes that are about to pass. This 80th anniversary is the last major one that I suspect any of them is going to witness. And I think it's absolutely appropriate we take a moment, particularly because the world at the moment is looking at, as a more dangerous place than ever. And there's a feeling of deja vu with Russia invading the European continent, nervousness about our political masters, about what to do about it, a sense of appeasement because nobody wants to go to war. You know, all of these are lessons from history that if we if we do let these things escalate, we pay a very high price.